Hello beautiful art lovers. It is time for me to talk you through this artwork. It's called On A Wing. It's mixed media and I can't wait to show you how I got all these delicious details and a little bit of behind the scenes. So sit down with a cup of tea and I hope you enjoy what you see here. Okay, so the way I started this was just uh, by gently laying in um, some dark layers for the t-shirt. And I had a lot of fun layering with Copic markers. Copic markers are alcohol markers and they're just a quick and easy way to get colour down. And I often use them for outlines around my subjects, much like what you're seeing here. It's just fun, just adds a little extra element before I add my paint layers in like I'm doing here with the background. I'm just adding some extra highlights to my background. I'm not getting particularly caught up in the details of this. It's just rough. I like using my square brush to get some really nice sharp shapes. And after doing that with my background, I'm actually starting to get a sense of where my shadows are gonna be. And I'm actually using a red pencil to do this. This is so that it'll just drop back and disappear once I put some paint layers on top. And now I'm looking for the detail in the background. I often use my pencils to start pulling out the detail after I've got some rough shapes into the background. I like to think of my backgrounds as sort of like a semi-abstract approach to doing things. Um, for many years I painted abstract work and it's nice to be able to incorporate it in the style of portraiture that I'm doing. Now as a final little detail in the background, I'm actually choosing to add these really interesting stylistic lines. By no means is this realism, but it's a stylistic choice I like to add in before moving on to my subject. After that, I'm going to start painting the face. Okay, let's tackle this face. So you'll notice I wet the paper first and then I drop my paint in and that's actually a watercolour technique. This is acrylic paint, but I treat it like a watercolour. And that's just so you don't actually have to work so hard. The water does the work for you by carrying the pigment. Um, here I'm correcting some spots in the eyes, I painted over them and I'm just putting in the base layers of my eyes. I'll come back to these and add pencil a bit later. But everything you see here is me just building up my paint layers before I'm ready to tackle it with more detailed pencil work. What I'm doing here is adding a cooler, darker tone on the face to start creating the shape. It's quite simply a matter of adding a burgundy or a purple to the paint colours you're already using. And this allows me to build those shadows in. You can see the shadows are quite intense and it's just a matter of adding a cooler tone. Um, I'm very, very briefly blocking in the hair, leaving some highlights, dropping in the darker bits here of the hair. And again, these are all just basic paint layers that give me some pigment on the paper before I start adding detail with pencil. Um, I allow my base layers of paint to sort of inform what I'll do with the pencil on top. So later you'll see how I use those highlights left in the paint layers to indicate how I put the highlights in with the pencils. So this is just foundation work. Everything I'm doing is just making sure that I know where my colours go, where my shapes are. It really is just a foundation. So much of this is going to be covered, but it's just, it's like laying the concrete slab of a house. This is the foundation that I'm going to build on top of very, very soon when I pull my pencils out. Okay, it's time to tackle this face and the detail using pencils. The pencils I'm using are Prismacolors and Faber-Castell Polychromos. And I wish I could tell you there's a lot, there's a lot of um, method to this. And I suppose if I was trying to sum it up, I would say that I'm starting with the darker areas. It's like I'm trying to, it's like my eye is looking for the darker spots to bring the detail in. Um, so once I define my darker areas, it's easy to work out from there. So darker areas often hang around in, you know, under the, the hair. The corners of the eyes, the nostrils, close to the nose, um, the line of the lips. And I find once I get those little bits in, then I can start working out from there. But fair warning, 
I spent a long time getting this face rendered because I actually used the wrong side of the paper I was working on, which means I had a lot more work to do to fill the tooth of the paper. So a lot of what you're seeing is me working probably two or three times harder than what I normally work. But that's okay, it's a learning curve and I learned a lot from it. But you can still see my method. You can see that I'm really starting to try and define my darks. I'm starting to pull out, you know, certain sections of the hair, defining the eye a little bit more. And it's just slowly, slowly that you start seeing a face look back at you that looks like a rendered human face. Um, it's, it takes a lot of patience and I would say all up, I probably spent about 20 hours getting the pencil work right on this piece. So yeah, just be patient. So I'm going to show you some really nifty things here. I actually included stickers in this artwork. As you can see, I've just laid down a butterfly sticker. And what I'm doing here is laying down a textured primer. It dries clear. You almost wouldn't know it's there. What it does is it allows me to add extra tooth on top of possibly a glossy surface or a surface that just needs more tooth so that I can work my pencils on top. Um, without the help of this primer, I would say I'd be pretty hard pressed to add any more detail on top of this glossy surface. So it's a real game changer. And my recommendation to any mixed media artist is keep this one up your sleeve. Um, it, it allows me to just keep building and building more details. And I can, can incorporate really cool things like stickers and, and glossy elements that once primed, there's sky's the limit. Okay, a lot has happened since we've last seen this face. Unfortunately, I find it really hard to film everything but what you can see is I've spent a long time rendering um, the colors of her face and now I'm adding in particularly the detail of the hair. My whole goal with the hair is to get um, channels of dark and light happening. Hair has this way of falling where there's like these sort of rivers of dark. So once I put the rivers of dark in, then I put the rivers of light or the, the, the highlights on top. And that's sort of a very basic approach to how I do hair. I don't get lost in strands. I look for the channels and the rivers and the, the sparkles of highlights. Okay, it's time for me to show you how I really, really bring all of my collage elements um, and sort of smush them into my artwork. And by smush, I mean by incorporating them um, and layering them in a way that they don't detract, they look like they're part of the artwork. So I suppose the question is like, why would I do that rather than actually just drawing them myself? And the simple question is why not? Um, it's a lot of fun. I love sourcing different elements outside of myself. Perhaps like this butterfly is done in a style that maybe I wouldn't actually know how to do. But the secret is once you bring in an external element into your artwork, you've got to incorporate it somehow. You've got to sort of add your little bit of yourself on top of it. And the way I do that is with these details. I pull out different colors, I add colors. You can see I've added a fluoro orange that wasn't there before. I intensify the blacks, I add highlights. And it's just a way of layering to, like I said, smoosh everything together. You can see I'm doing it with this butterfly as well. I've added more black and yellow and red and brought out little highlights in the wings. It's a lot of fun to do. It's It just adds a different element that otherwise you might struggle to create yourself or it might not be as fresh as what this looks like. 
And the secret is once those elements are down, you have to then also incorporate the space around them. So I spent a long time making sure I got the shadow of the butterfly onto her face correct. So it's a little bit of understanding how light is cast, understanding where your light source is coming from. And once you understand where that light is coming from, you can make it look realistic. All right, it's time to add the finishing touches to her hair now. What you're gonna see me doing is adding um, actually a blue colored pencil into the dark areas here. This is Payne's Gray. It's shadow in a pencil, I love it. And you'd be surprised that you can actually find blue in hair. So what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that my darks are as dark as I think they should be. And then with my ivory colored pencil here, I'm going to start bringing in those sparkly highlights on top. I work pretty hard to hold off with the highlights until the end of an artwork because once those highlights are in it's hard to go brighter than that. So I always save the brightest parts for the end of the artwork and you'll see I'm trying to do that in the hair now. I just bring all these sparkly bits in and it's such a joy to see it all come together. All right we're on the home stretch now. This has got to be the favorite part of an artwork for me. It's when I get to bring in um, extra colors, intensify things. You'll see I popped a bit of yellow into her face and that's just to make sure it looks like it's part of the artwork. That yellow is reflecting from the background. I get to bring in my pure white paint here and sharpen up some details in the background. I'll come in very soon with my fine liner paintbrush and just add more white to the butterflies. I'm intensifying those yellows. And perhaps maybe as a viewer, you might not notice these final touches, but as an artist, you know that can really just make the difference to an artwork looking good and looking finished. So this is just me finishing it all up and this is the home stretch. Mm, and you just gotta love the feeling of peeling away the edges of the tape and really seeing the artwork as a final piece. Here she is. This is the final piece. It's called On a Wing. And I just want to thank you so much for sticking around to see the process, to see the journey. If you've loved this, I would love to know. Please drop a comment about your favorite part, what you found the most interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next time lapse. Stay safe, stay creative. <laughs>